did NIH fund gain of function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology through Echo Health? It depends on your definition of gain of function research. If you're speaking about the generic term, yes, we did, because, but this is research, the generic term is research that goes on in many, many labs around the country. It is not regulated. His 15 year old son was among nine boys on the boat. Their team, the Oakland Strokes, was taking part in a regatta in the Sacramento River ship channel on April 20th when the shots rang out. It was uh, maybe 10 feet. It could have been closer, it could have been a little bit further away, but it was too close. Luckily, no one was hurt, a motive unknown. No one saw the shooter. There were, there were dozens and dozens of people. There were boaters or people fishing. There were uh, people walking along the path. Uh, and the police don't even know where the shots came from. West Sacramento police are investigating. The high school age boys on the boat are part of the Oakland Strokes, which compete in local, state, and national races. They practice five days a week. They're based at the Tidewater Aquatic Center in Oakland. They're certainly aware of the violence in Oakland, but never expected to get shot at while racing out on the water. No parent should give any thought to sending their child to a sporting event, to a concert, to elementary school, and think, my child might get shot. Good evening, and welcome to It's Too Late where I like to say it's never too late to gain some function. You know what I mean? Like those teenagers in that rowboat, they gained some function. They learned how to row faster. I guarantee you they won the race. Anyways, we're not just about, you know, crime on these SHTF headlines. Because, you know, when you know what hits the fan, it happens in all kinds of ways. But we are about solutions on this show. And here is a solution to crime that we should have thought of a long time ago. The owners of the pharmacy did not want to go on camera. They're pretty upset. There was quite a bit of damage from these people trying to get in. But it seems this security system, this fog that they use, made a difference. Take a look at this. LAPD officers from Devonshire Division responding to a burglary alarm in Chatsworth walk into a wall of fog. The same stuff, it seems, the burglars ran into when they broke in. Preliminary investigation indicates that um, the suspects, after they tunneled through the first business, the second business had a security system that included a, f um, a fog machine that deployed fog and successfully um, deterred the suspect from breaking in. Wow. Have you guys seen this before? Is this something new that businesses are using? Do you have a sense at all in the valley? No, uh, not for me. It's my first time seeing it. The fog, that is. I'm not sure which pharmacy it was, but, but it was probably one of our clients. He's with Density USA, maker of anti-intrusion fogging security systems. It ties into the burglar alarm, and so when the criminal breaks in, the fog deploys and the criminal leaves. There's nothing to clean up. The fog is completely benign. They just can't see anything to steal it. So they turn and leave. It's just now starting to blossom. Especially with the explosion of pharmacy burglaries. The Chatsworth one, just the latest in a recent series, Fox 11 has covered with incidents all over Los Angeles. Retailers are, are at their wits end at this point. And so we're, we're just trying to do the best we can to help them out and, and kind of turn the tide against this criminal element that is, you know, doing bad stuff. Police do say that whatever system you use, like fog, does not and should not replace a good video camera system because that really does make a difference in their investigation. Now that is an interesting solution to the crime, to the retail crime. I wonder if that would work as something on your person in case you had been kidnapped and thrown into the back of a van. Investigators call this man a monster and describe the blood curdling screams and the body cam footage that made even the most seasoned shake at the LA County Sheriff's Department. This is a first look at the suspected serial rapist, 39 year old Eduardo Sarabia. Investigators say he's a transient and illegal immigrant from Mexico, now locked up with no bail. LASD investigators strongly believe the two rapes he's charged with are not the only ones. Two heroic deputies caught him in the act inside a white van in the San Gabriel Mountains and arrested him yesterday. There are a lot of very disturbing and heartbreaking details surrounding these two incidents that sound straight out of a horror movie, but we can't release them yet without jeopardizing LASD's case. Well, how scary is that? 
well, you know what? These insane people who would do such a thing, they don't even need a van. A woman is attacked jogging along the Santa Monica Strand, dragged by her hair to a nearby bathroom by a homeless man with a criminal record. Several witnesses intervened in the attack and called police. KTLA's Carlos Saucedo is live in Santa Monica, where he spoke with concerns, residents and visitors. Hi, Carlos. Ladies, good afternoon. The victim survived this awful attack and it happened on this popular bike path behind me here in the city of Santa Monica. Witnesses say that the suspect in this case, a homeless man, attacked her from behind, pulled her by the hair and attempted to drag her into the public restroom. What was supposed to be the start of a beautiful beach day in Santa Monica Monday morning quickly turned violent. Police say this man brutally assaulted a woman near the Big Knoll restrooms. The victim, a Venice resident, was jogging southbound on the beach path when police say the suspect, Malcolm Ward Jr., grabbed the woman from behind by her ponytail and dragged her toward the public restrooms where he tried sexually assaulting her. It happened after 7 a.m. on Oceanfront Walk where many joggers hit the beach path. Very concerning um, being a woman who might come out here alone. It's very terrifying. I don't even want to think about it because this scares me. I usually walk alone. This woman asked us not to show her face but says she's seen an uptick in violent crime in recent years. It's very scary and sad or actually shocking but not so surprised and i don't think anybody's surprised anymore but everybody is shocked at how fast the country well turned to s h you know what that's right our country is not doing so well you have to agree it's not i'm not just highlighting things on this show you see them in your town and the headlines in your own newspapers so what are we going to do, folks? I don't know. We, we should talk about when it was great. But I guess since half of America go, oh, you said you want America to be great, you must be xenophobic. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's just accept the future. Crime is going to be rampant in America. You know it. The border is open. Everybody's okay with it. Okay. And now we have robots to do everything for us, like the limbo. You know what I mean? They're going to be so entertaining. They only cost like 16000 bucks. Hi, hey, robot. It's going to wave at you. And all this technology, yet the world is falling apart. America is just a totally in the toilet. But we have this mega te technology. Look, you can punch this robot and it won't even hit you back. That's awesome. Man, we got to make that thing a cop. Am I right? Oh, oh, oh. Just kidding. But hey, listen, if we were smart, we would train these robots to make sure nobody crosses the border illegally. We would train them to make sure there's no carjacking because, of course, the car is a robot now. And a carjacker comes along and the car just goes ahead and decides to take its arm off or something. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just having fun here. But, you know, we could train AI to take care of all of crime, but they won't do that. They're going to train AI to look at everyone who has a solution. Because they don't want solutions. It's true, you guys. They love the chaos. But hey, we'll be impressed. You know what I mean? Crime's going to go on. There's still going to be home invasions. But hey, you've got a robot that'll open up a Coke for you as soon as you're done being invaded. It will be like, would you like a Coke and a smile? I can't really smile because I've only got just a light bar for an eye. Okay, we'll have to just go ahead and We'll have to draw a smile with a Sharpie on that thing's face. It's true. Your two cents really does matter. It matters now, and it can matter in the future. You know, just like these tech oligarchs plan to do with their avatars so that for thousands of years, everybody will know them, and their two cents will be right there at everybody's beck and call. That's what so-and-so thought. Well, you can do it, too. For a price, they'll put you in the system and people will be able to access you. You know what I mean? And they'll have all of your thoughts at their fingertips. Or you could just start a YouTube channel and, you know, hope it doesn't get deleted. A 60-year-old man only has days left to live, according to his doctors. But he is telling News Nation he has closure thanks to artificial intelligence. He is leaving his wife and children with an AI version of himself.
60-year-old Michael Balmer preserving his personality, his memories, his lessons to leave to his wife and children, all with the help of Eternos. They call themselves a legacy AI platform. Well, last night on News Nation Prime, you saw that man who has terminal cancer describe his experience. Going is hard, but um, when you know that something stays back, that your legacy is uh, uh, kind of um, um, uh, staying in the vault and is available uh, for uh, your children, grandchildren, for the uh, generations after, this gives you a kind of, at least it gave me a kind of closure. We know so many of you had reactions to this online after it aired last night. We wanted to bring in the co-founders of Eternos to answer some questions. Robert and Andrew Locasio, thank you both for being here. And Robert, I do want to start with you. First of all, how long does this take for a person to do and how much does it cost? So yeah, we make you an AI over about a two to three day process. So we record your voice in 300 different training phrases and then we make that into an AI and then we get all your knowledge, which could take weeks or months. And we see it as an ongoing process because you're giving that knowledge and then we marry it with the AI and then you're alive. You're alive forever uh, in Eternos. How much does it cost? It costs between 15 and $20,000 one time fee. And that basically puts you in what we call the vault and then forever you will be available to your future family or friends. You decide. But that one-time fee basically makes you an internos forever. I appreciate that. And I just want to be really clear here, because that is a hefty fee for most people, that one-time fifteen to $20,000. Andrew, why don't you pick it up here? Is there a subscription fee for your loved ones to access this? Or is it $20,000 and for all eternity, loved ones can access the memories, the personality? Well, every Eternos persona owner is given a package of how many people they'd like to access. In fact, that's pretty loose. It's, we want them to be able to get through to all their ancestors. And so there is no fee for that. The most important part is that everybody gets to participate. We don't want to put any barriers up for them participating and talking to Michael. Okay. Robert, are there any risks you can foresee from a person doing this? You know, we, we created something, I, I ran a, obviously before this, a very large uh, AI company. And when I went after this, um, we decided to create a very high bar on security and the safety of that AI. And so that's why we put it in this thing called the vault. All your person is there, all your knowledge is there, and only people that you invite in can get to it. It does uh, grow over time. Uh, it will, even when you're no longer here, um, it can gain knowledge based on your past, but it's secure. And that's one of the things, you know, we want to make a very premium AI. I've seen chatbots and I built one of the biggest chatbot companies previously for companies and all that. But when I set out on Eternos, I said, I want to build something that has the highest quality and the highest set of safety and standards to bring AI to people's lives. So when they're not here, they can trust it's going to reflect who they are. Co-founders of Eternos, Robert and Andrew Locasio, it's something ambitious. We appreciate your time. And I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. It's too late tonight, you guys. And if you're up and around in the morning, we have a great show for the Bad Apple Report at 7.30 a.m., bright and early, right here at Home on the Range. And listen, again, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being here for these shows. You really keep me going. I love reading the comments. You're so kind to each other and kind to me. You're really awesome people. You know it. And I know it. Thank you so much. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.